right, we're looking at factoring complex trinomials. This is the type of factoring where you really do need to spend a lot of time on. So you're going to be watching this video and probably have to watch it a few times to really understand and make sure that you do a lot of questions that involve factoring complex trinomials. The method I'm going to use here today is going to be called decomposition. It is a method that's relatively new but old, meaning that it was developed in 1908 and somewhere along the lines, somewhere around 1908, it's been a, long, been a long time, and then it got lost in translation along the way and it recently popped back up as a way to, for students to factor complex trinomials a little simpler. Let's look at this particular question, ax squared plus bx plus c. What makes it complex is the value next to x squared, the a, the a value, is going to be a number other than 1. So, and this is a number that can't be removed by a common factor. So, and that's what makes it complex. We will not be able to remove that a value by a common factor, so we still remain with a, something that's complex. Now, what's important to note is the question you have to ask yourself. You're, um, before we do anything, we must always common factor first. And then ask yourself, what two numbers multiply to give you a times c and add to give you b? So again, we have that product sum rule that we had in the previous section, but here our product is a combination of a times c. So what product gives you a times c to give you a sum of b? And again, b is still your sum from the original. The only difference here is it's not just c, but a times c, and that's something you're going to have to remember. So if you force yourself to remember a times c, even when we do simple trinomial factoring, you can remember that simple trinomial factoring when we did it, the a value was 1, so 1 times c is still a times c, and that's our product. All right, moving forwards. We're going to look at lots and lots of examples, folks. So the first uh, part, we're going to look at 3x squared minus 5x minus 8. We need to factor this fully. So we ask ourselves the question, is there a common factor? The answer is no. So the next step is to find the product. The product here is negative 24. The sum is negative 5. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 24 and add to give you negative 5? That's right, folks. That's going to be negative 8 and positive 3. Negative 8 times positive 3 gives us negative 24, and negative 8 plus 3 gives us negative 5. So our factors are going to be 3x, so not our factors, folks, but what we've created here is something called a the broken up value of this. So I'm just going to kind of go a little bit forwards if I can. I don't want to go too much forwards and I just want you to be able to see the following. So we're just going to break it up just a little bit. Here we go. Okay. And there. So what we've created here is these are the two numbers that when I add them to give us uh, together they give us negative 5x but what's important here is what we're creating and what we're creating here is a uh, situation where we can find a common factor inside so partial factoring if you remember in common factoring a couple of days a uh, couple of sections ago in 5.3 you saw that there was something called partial factoring. We did it at the very end. So we're going to try and do that by splitting this particular of uh, four term polynomial. We're going to split it into two parts. There is the green part right here and then the yellow part which is right here. And what we're going to do is only common factor in the green part. So we're taking out the x and what are we left with? That's right, we're going to be left with 3x minus 8. In the next piece, we have to take out the sign. That's the one rule you must remember is in the second piece, the sign comes out. So the plus comes out, and what can I common factor in this piece? Well, 
The only thing I can take out is a one. And you don't have to put the one here, but I recommend it because we're going to see it in the next step. So we're taking out a plus one. And what are we left with? 3x minus 8 inside brackets. Now, folks, do you see what I see here in this part of the question? Hopefully you see it. Because what I see here is a common factor of 3x minus 8. When we take out that 3x minus 8, we're literally taking out this, this 3x minus 8 that's common and this 3x minus 8, which is common. We're taking out one of those. What we'll be left with is x plus 1. And what we did, again, is we took out a common factor of 3x minus 8. So 1 from each piece. And we're left with x plus 1 as our remaining pieces. Well, guess what, folks? We've now factored that original question, 3x squared minus 5x minus 8, well, actually comes from this, these factors. Now, very important to note, you can always check your answer. Check your answer by taking 3x times x, which is 3x squared. Three, now the outside, which is 3x times 1, is 3x. And the inside is minus 8x. 3x minus 8x is negative 5x. Oh, look, here it is. And then negative 8 times 1 is negative 8. So what do we have here? We have these are our factors for that question. Moving forwards. Part B. You're asked to complete 5x squared minus 7x plus 2. What you're asked to do is to factor this, and we can do this again by decomposition. Our product is 10, positive 10, and our sum is negative 7. What two numbers multiply to give us positive 10 and add to give us negative 7? Hopefully you're thinking negative 5 and negative 2. So 5x squared minus 5x minus 2x plus 2, so I broke up the negative 7x into two pieces that give us the product sum rule. And now what we're going to do is break it into two parts, common factor the green part, and you get 5x times x minus 1, common factor the yellow part, don't forget to take the sign with it, you get negative 2 times x minus 1, and now do you see what I see? Hopefully you do. You take out the x minus 1 from each piece and you get 5x minus 2 as your remaining factor. And folks, this will equal this once it's expanded. Now note, when you do that, you have to always check. So get yourself, give yourselves a moment to check. x times 5x is 5x squared. Minus 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. And do the outside inside. Outside is negative 2x. Inside is negative 5x. Total, that gives you negative 7x. And we've got it, folks. All right, let's keep going. 2x squared plus 7x minus 15. Now, remember, keep in mind that you're always trying a common factor first. Here we can't. Also to note, all of this work that's here gives you no marks. This is for you to be able to get the correct answer which is worth all the marks. So keep that in mind. The work is not going, the process is not going to give you any marks, only the final answer will. So 2x squared plus 7x minus 15, what you have to do is find the product. What is the product here? Well, it's negative 30. The sum is positive 7. So what two numbers multiply to give you negative 30 and add to give you positive 7. Well, that's going to be 2x squared plus 10x minus 3x minus 15. See, these two multiply to give you negative 30, and these two add to give you 7. So, now what we're going to do is break it into two pieces. Common factor the first half, which is 2x times x plus 5, and common factor the second half, don't forget the sign, negative 3 times x plus 5.
Do you see what I see? Well, I hope you do. And this is the final factors of this. All right, so we're going to do a lot of decomposition. This is the type of factoring we're going to do in this section. We're going to be doing, doing a lot of this decomposition. So if you need any explanation, you need to be able to do some questions. Watch this video and over and over if you need to. All right, part D. 4x squared minus 17x plus 4. What's the product? Positive 16. The sum is negative 17. So what two numbers multiply to give you 16 and add to give you negative 17? Well, that's going to be 4x squared minus 16x minus x plus 4 split into two pieces, partially factor, so partial common factor. Do you see what I see? Of course you do. x minus 4 times 4x minus 1. Again, what are we doing? Let's recap. Divide into two parts. The first part, your common factor, 4x. You're left with x minus 4 as a remainder. Pull out the negative, and then a 1 over here. So pulling out a negative 1 means this will become x, and this will become minus 4. Looking at the whole entire question, do you see what I see? Well, yes again, yes you do. And what you see is you see an x minus 4 that's common in both, that would be these ones here, this x minus 4 and this x minus 4. And what's left when we pull it out is going to be 4x minus 1 in the other bracket. All right, let's move forward. E, here's another example. A little more complicated. Can we common factor? Nope. So we need to be able to do this question. The product is 30, positive, and the sum is positive 11. What two numbers? Multiply to give you 30 and add to give you 11. You should be thinking automatically, that's right, plus 5 and plus 11, 6. So plus 5xy plus 6xy plus 6y squared. Now you're going to divide it into two pieces. Okay, and common factor. In the first half, you're going to common factor a 5x. You're left with x plus y. In the second half, you're going to common factor a 6y, and you're left with x plus y. So what do we have here? We have our common factor step or partial factor step. Once we've done this, we should see something very clear happening to us. That would be the x plus y. And what we'll be left with is 5x plus 6y. And the question began to develop in the classes is whether this will always occur. Well, with decomposition, if it's done properly, yes, it will always occur. And you will get the final answer once you pull everything out. So it's very important to note that. It's not something that magically appears the way you want. There has to be a pattern. All right, then moving forwards, let's look at f. 12x squared minus 32xy minus 12y squared. All right, this, folks, needs for you to do, do the first type of factoring that you must learn, and that is common factoring. You're going to pull out a common factor in that whole trinomial there, and that's going to be 4. 4 is common in that entire line. So once I pull out the 4, we have our question, and you're asked to factor this. So 4, bracket, now what's our product is negative 9, our sum is negative 8. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 9 and add to give you negative 8? That's right, looking at the screen, you should have noticed it's negative 9 plus 1 will give us negative 8 and negative 9 multiplied by 1 will give us negative 9. So now that we have that, what we can do is common factor or partial factor and we do that. As you can see here, we took that out and we have x minus 3y in both cases and we pull out 4 times x minus 3y times 3x plus y and that's our final answer for f. Again, Partial factoring gave us the common major factor. We have that here. The 4 came out, which was already there. 
And then finally what's left is 3x plus y as our final part. All right, g, 12x squared plus 10x minus 12. What I want you to do is stop the video now and try this question. Stop now. All right, we're back. First thing you should have done was common factor. Here it is. Once you've common factor, you determine the product and the sum. The product is negative 6, negative 36, and the sum is positive 5. What works is 9x minus 4x and then minus 6. So the 9x minus 4x is what changed it to give 5x. Next step is to common factor. 3x times 2x plus 3 minus 2, don't forget the sign in the middle has to go out, 2x plus 3. You should see that 2x plus 3 is the same in both parts. Common factor it out. You're left with 3x minus 2 as our final factor. So this is our total factored step for G. All right, H, 36x squared minus 60x plus 9. What goes on here? Well, you need to come and factor. What are we going to come and factor a 3 out? And we get the following. Once we do that, we can determine the product, which is uh, 36, and the sum is negative 20. We need to know what two numbers multiply to give you negative 36 and add to give you, uh, sorry, positive 36 and add to give you negative 20. Well, they're going to be 12x squared minus 18x minus 2x plus 3 because negative 18 plus negative 2 is negative 20. All right. Now, partial common factor inside those brackets. Here we go. And common factor within those factors. And you get this. And folks, this looks like the final end of this. But remember, he, you need to really work at being able to solve these problems very, very carefully and very methodically. It took me a, less time, but it's important that you take more time to understand these type of problems. All right, have a numerical night. Take care.